What's up guys? So I just wanted to make a quick video tutorial showing how I like to use Google's Knit Collection to edit my photos. The reason why I wanted to make this tutorial is because Google actually made this Knit Collection free for you to download. I've actually paid for this download two separate times in the past uh, because I use it so much and I love it so much. Um, so the fact that it's free now is, is huge and so I wanted to show you A, how to download this program and B, how to tweak the settings because using some of these presets straight out of the box doesn't make your images look that great and it might actually discourage you from using the plugins but they're really great and I'll show you how I like to tweak the settings. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is where to download this program. Just go to google.com slash knit collection NIK and it'll take you to the home page. It'll show you exactly what's included in the pack and the download button's right here on the top right. And again, this is a plugin, so you're going to have to have Photoshop or Lightroom to run this. It's not a standalone editor. So once you have this downloaded, just open up your image in Photoshop. This is the one I'm going to use here. I'm going to go to filter drop down to my plugins and find the knit collection and open analog effects pro and again there's seven different packs in the knit collection but i'm only going to show you how to use this one um, but all of the interface and settings are, are kind of similar um, how they're set up so if you have any questions go ahead and ask me there's also a lot of tutorials online on youtube on how to use this so the setting that i use probably 95 percent of the time is classic camera one and again like i said by just using the preset as is it looks like trash. So I'm gonna show you what I do. The first thing I do is go over to the panel on the right side and drop down the basic adjustments. And by default, it'll add 20% to detail extraction. And I turn that all the way back down to zero. Then after that, I drop the contrast back down to zero, which was at the original value. I can go ahead and close that. I turn off dirts and scratches and also lens vignette. And then I'll drop down the film type and the first thing I'll do is I'll turn the grain all the way up and then drop it down to soft. And then this is where I'll kind of experiment depending on the image. So neutral, you'll see that there's absolutely no fade on the edit. And obviously, as it says, the farther to the right you go, it'll add more of a faded effect. For this one, I think I stayed um, a little less than half or maybe a quarter of the way over, um, favoring the neutral end. And then on the strength slider, somewhere a little bit above half. So I'll hit OK and then open it back up in Photoshop. So once it processes and does its magic, uh, you can see the effect that it added. It's kind of like this orange faded film tint to the image and I really like it, but I'm gonna add a layer mask by clicking this mask icon here. And I'm gonna use a black brush and I'm actually gonna remove the effect from her face because I don't want her face looking that orange. So you can see the before and after of just the Analog Effects Pro. And looking at it now, I think I wanna drop the opacity of the effect overall. So if I drop it all the way to zero, there's basically no Analog Effects Pro layer. I think I'm gonna keep it around 70. I think that looks about right. And so the next thing I did was added a light leak to the corner of the image. And so I opened up a new curves layer, give it a nice boost in the mids and highs, and then make sure you're clicked on your mask, go over to your gradients, and then with white selected, drag from right to left. And that way the curves adjustment is only being applied to the area that's white on your mask. So the way that masks work is anything that's white, the effect will be applied. If it's black, that means it's not applied to the image. So with my gradient, I can kind of control what area is white and what area is black that the adjustment is affecting. I didn't do too much to these images in post. Um, I'll turn off these two layers to show you what we did and what I did in this set. Step one was using Analog Effects Pro to add that filmy orange tint to the image. And then I masked out her face because I didn't want her face orange. And then I added a light leak in the top right corner of the image. I do want to show you a final step that I did when editing this original image. And it's one of my favorite ways to add contrast to an image and make faces pop. And we're going to do that by using complementary colors. Now you could just open up a brightness and contrast layer and boost the contrast. But I don't always like how that turns out. The darks just get a little crushed and I think there's a better way to do it. So instead of just using a brightness and contrast or a levels adjustment to crush the blacks and add contrast to my image, my preferred method is to use complementary colors to make faces pop in my images. 
So it's super simple to understand what complementary colors are. Just go to Google and search color wheel and then just go to any of the images that pop up. And I do this all the time and I'll just have a color wheel open um, like in the corner of my screen. So colors that live on the opposite end of the wheel are complementary. So orange and blue, green and red. So understanding complementary colors, going back here, we can see that the overall tone of this image is slightly orange. And so her face is getting lost in the overall orange value of the image. So going back to the color wheel, we see that blue is a complementary color of orange. So what I'm gonna do next is open a selective color adjustment. What this allows you to do is edit each color individually, except white neutrals and blacks are gonna be your highlights, midtones, and shadows. So I'm gonna go to my blacks so I can control my shadows. So I'm gonna go and start pulling in blue-green values into my image with these sliders, and I have these values written down on a cheat sheet, so. So you can see that with each slider, I'm getting closer to a blue value in my shadows. All right, so these are the values I use in my original edit, and you'll see that there's now blue values in the shadows. And so I'll turn the layer on and off, and you'll see the difference that it makes by adding blue into the shadows. That blue being a complementary color of orange just gives it a little bit more pop without crushing my blacks. And so I'm happy with this amount of blue in the shadow, so now I'm just gonna invert my mask layer. And that basically paints the whole thing black where the effect is essentially turned off. And then I'm gonna go in with a paintbrush and paint back in the effect only in her face because I really only wanted to add contrast to her face in this image. And that looks about good. So I'll turn the layer on and off again so you can see what we did there with that selective color adjustment, adding blue into the shadows. Um, instead of just crushing the blacks and adding a ton of contrast, by simply using a complementary color to orange, we can make the face pop and keep the overall contrast and look of the image. So that's pretty much it. By using three adjustment layers, we went from our original image, then we used Analog Effects Pro, added a light leak in the corner, and then used a complementary color only in the shadows using a selective color layer to make her face pop. If you want to see the rest of the images using this exact same process, just head over to my website, go to collections, and scroll down to the bottom left. And as always, if you have any questions about camera settings or my editing, head over to my contact page and shoot me a message. I'm super easy to get a hold of. Or Snapchat me or send me a message on Instagram. That works too.